We are on the edge of a debt crisis, and we're about to go over the edge. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to the weekly briefings of Thriving Through Chaos, Conflict, and Crisis. My name is Rob Napolitano, and I'm going to be here with you every week to give you informed insights backed by data so that you can make informed decisions about protecting your wealth. We are holistically being attacked, and the encumbrance on our freedom has been increased at an unprecedented rate through the excess indebtedness, inflation, the reduction in purchasing power, the reshuffling and overreach of global power. All this unconventional warfare leads to the destruction of wealth and to the destruction of a family and increases in social unrest. Real estate becomes a weakness and a target for destruction. So for those of you that want to protect your assets and wealth and endure or even thrive through these headwinds, I'm going to be here every week giving you informed facts and data so that you can defend what you have and decisively act when you see weakness. Today, I'm going to show you a little bit more of where weakness is in the marketplace and how you can identify some of these weaknesses so that you can go ahead and attack and protect what's yours. So I invite you for the next seven to 10 minutes to listen to what I have, show you what I have up on the screen, because this is an enemy that I've already battled and I've won. You see, thriving through chaos, conflict, and crisis starts with three simple steps. It requires education, quick, decisive action, and limiting your costs and conflicts. The most prepared wins every time. So going through the, the great financial crisis of 2008, I actually lost everything I had, went to a chapter 13, and I had to find a way to win. I got educated. I went to law school. I prepared my defenses inside of my chapter 13, and I decisively struck at two of the largest banks in the world with two lawsuits, beat them, and I actually came out at a higher net worth than when I went in. So when I came out, I wanted to make a difference, and I felt the personal professional responsibility to educate and share that insight and cut through some of the noise and bring you some of the data and some of the facts that I've learned. Because the biggest thing that I learned when I went through that experience was I realized how the system really works and how it's rigged. And that the average person, people like you and me, that we're basically flying blind in investing today. So I'll bring you some of these insights so that you can make some moves to protect your family. And that's what these briefings are all about, you know, because there's a lot of change going on now. We're in a world that creates a great deal of confusion and complexity, all this noise. But with that comes disruptions, comes inefficiencies, comes misalignments, and it exposes weaknesses on both sides. And those are the opportunities that reveal themselves for those that are ready to pounce on those weaknesses. So I hope you get some value from what we're doing every week. For the previous um, briefings that we had in the past, you can hit us up on our website at www.gritrust.com. So let's get into what we have in store for you today. So today, I wanted to show you some data that have been put out from the Bureau of Economic Analysis. And this is a leading economic indicator graph. This was just recently put out showing where we are economically here in the United States. It goes by what you're looking at here are the, the years on the bottom of a chart here. You can see in 2020 was where we had very low economic activity and we went to a brief recession. These gray areas are where the recessions are. And in the 2023 going to 2024, the point to take here is that this is being put out there now as to where most advisors are looking at this to make decisions for you investors. But the point I want to make with this here, even though it shows that we're at one of the lowest points since the pandemic, as far as indications of where the economy is going, this gives a sentiment that we really are going to be heading into a recession at some point soon. And this is what I'm talking about, where they'll show you their version of how we're getting to the edge of a cliff and maybe going over. But the point I want to make about this chart and where many advisors use this data, the challenge with this data is that it's retrospective and it shows you a historical depiction of what's happened and it doesn't tell you what's coming. 
And by the time you look at this data, by the time you act on this data, it's already too late. And this is what they, the traditional, many of those traditional financial advisors, this is what they're feeding you or what they're basing their decisions off of. But there's another group of people who are actually looking at what's coming and not connecting the dots looking backwards, but are actually connecting dots looking forward based on what's happened in the past. I want to introduce you to a thought. One that was brought and said by um, Einstein. Compound interest. I want to talk about and focus on compound interest. Compound interest, according to Einstein, is the eighth wonder of the world. And he said that those who understand it, earn it, and those who don't, pay it. Now think about that for a second. Those who understand it, earn it, and those who don't, pay it. You see, interest is a part of our lives, everywhere in our lives. We're paying interest on mortgages, interest on, 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 on car loans, student loans, credit card, all this, all, everybody has debt at some point, at some place in their life, business loans. And then where are we actually earning interest from the bank? That's part of why we invest because what the interest that the bank has given us is not enough. So we want to invest to create more of our wealth. But there's more to it than that. Way, way much more to it than that, that you're not being fed. And so this is the cornerstone of everything that I show you is I want you to get to a place where you, instead of paying it, I want you to be on the side where you're earning it. And this is where I want to show you Ray Dalio's. He had he, Ray Dalio has a um, a book out. He's got some lessons out, and he talks about how we go through long term and short term debt cycles. Now, I'm not going to go through the whole economics course that Ray Dalio goes. You can find that on the internet. It's well worth the effort of going through his books, his studies, and some of the information he's put out there. But I'm going to give you one of his simple charts. He puts it so simply. And this is a debt chart. We go through cycles. As just we go through economic cycles, business cycles, uh, world order cycles. There's all sorts of cycles we go through. But no one talks about the debt cycle. And we go through two debt cycles, a long-term debt cycle and a short-term debt cycle. I'm just going to show you what a simple long-term debt cycle looks like. And what you see here is a curve of accumulated debt. And that's going to be on the government level, the commercial level, business and personal. We all go through long-term debts, and that's controlled by central banking as they raise and lower interest rates. And as they print more money, make more credit available, put it into the system, more people, more businesses can borrow. And the more they allow that to happen, the more people do. And we see an increase in the debt production. And that lasts for about a 50 year term until we get to the next part of the natural part of the cycle where we go into the next two or three year depression. We get through a depression because naturally, because humans are humans, they overspend, they over splurge, they over borrow. And we get into this position where there's too much debt and it, it smothers production. It smothers progress. And so naturally that needs to be cleaned out. Our, our balance sheets, our personal balance sheets, our, 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 our businesses and the, and, and, the, and the government balance sheets all have to be cleansed of debt. And there's a number of ways to do that. Ray talks about that as well. And we could talk about that another time too and how to do that. But it does have to go through this natural order cycle. And then once we get to the bottom, we start to get back into the reflation years, which takes about seven to 10 years. And then we go that, do that over and over again for the long term. And then we also go through these types of curves in short term cycles too, in three to seven year cycles as well. So there's a combination of things, but this is a simple thing. What I want to show you here, the point I'm trying to make here is that we go in top cycles, bottom cycles, and then right back up again too. And so it's important to know where we are in this debt cycle, because this is the cornerstone of economics and what we're seeing happening out there. What you'll be given as far as information, retrospective information, is stuff that's happened already in the past. And as I said before, there are people out there that are operating, looking at charts like this, knowing where things are going and posturing themselves and positioning themselves 
so that they don't get hit on the downturn. You don't want to be on this downturn here because this here, what happens on this downturn is where wealth gets destroyed on all levels. And this is where we are right now, right where this little break is right here. This is where we are economically right now here in the U.S. and globally as well. I'll tell you this as well, that we are better off right now than other economies around the world. But as my friend Doug Casey says as well, there's a great line that he uses. That just means that our economy is the prettiest mayor in the slaughterhouse. That's all that means. We're all going to be going through it. And you want to be prepared for this. Now, this is not just me saying this. So let's go through some headlines that came out just this week. Cantor Fitzgerald, CEO, says to prepare for a very ugly two years of commercial real estate turmoil. Now, this is great. He talked to Fox Business, uh, Maria Bartiromo, when he was over at Davos this week. And he talked about how we're going to see a lot of turmoil in commercial real estate. Now, if you've been listening and following along for the for for some of the stuff that we've been talking about, remember how I said this is going to happen. We're going to see commercial real estate first go down here in the U.S. Then you're going to see unemployment spike. You're going to see a lot of layoffs and unemployment spike. Then you're going to have people who can't afford to pay credit cards. And then you're going to have the residential uh, crisis happen. Residential housing crisis happen after that as well. OK, so that's how this is going to start to flow. And we're just in the first couple of innings of this coming around. And this is uh, so weird. This is actually today on January 23rd. This was put out uh, that two years of very uh, tumultuous and CRE turmoil. So that's not the only one that I saw coming out today from credit news from Sam Borgie uh, last week. He talked about how 60 percent of the global economy is in for a lost decade due to record debt. Now, that's a macro picture. Developing countries will have a hard time breaking the vicious cycle of debt and poverty as the World Bank economists warn. So this is not just me saying this. This is the World Bank. These are people on the global stage. We, they just went through um, the World Economic Forum in Davos. This is one of the main topics they talk about is the cycle of debt and what they're going to do with it. Just last week, this broke on Bloomberg as well. Blackstone, one of the biggest investment bankers out there. This, the Bright, the, 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 the Blackstone Real Estate Investment Trust, this was their trophy uh, hedge fund buying commercial real estate. This is where they were going to go and buy the best properties in commercial real estate. They were going to buy some distressed debt. They were going to buy all sorts of things, and they wanted to continue to be masters of the real estate world. And it turns out they posted their worst yearly performance in its history. Now, they haven't been this, they have, they've been around for a while, but this this fund hasn't been around for a while. This fund has only been around since 2017. So that's 7 years this fund has been around. And now it's posting its worst performance ever in its history. What else am I saying? Now, this next one I'm going to show you is an interesting one. The next one I'm about to show you is Wells Fargo in Raleigh, North Carolina is abandoning its iconic tower as the office loans losses mount. Okay, this move coincides with Wells Fargo disclosure last week that the total of non-accrual loans means the number of loans that are, don't have payments on them in this portfolio backed by office building increased to 3.4 billion at the end of December and look at that other number, up from 189 million in 2002. That means in 12 months, from 189 million dollars of defaulted loans and commercial loans that it had on its books, it went up to 3.4 billion. That's a 1,700 percent increase in 12 months, and that's just the beginning. Because we're about to see 2.5 trillion dollars of commercial debt come to maturity in the next five years. So there's a lot more of this to come. As I said, it starts with commercial real estate, it goes into office, and then it's gonna get into multifamily. It's gonna get to multifamily real estate as well. And we're gonna start seeing some of these things come in the multifamily side as well. So 
the bad news is, is that we are, we are living in this environment, which is created by the five C's, the chaos, crisis, conflict, and it creates complexity and confusion. But the good news is, like as I said, that inside of this climate, there creates opportunity. It creates uh, uh, um, opportunities, and you have to be informed to make these right decisions about not just the opportunities that are real, but which ones are actually right and right for you. And that's what these weekly briefings do. So from that place, hopefully you can gain the clarity and confidence you need to protect your assets and grow your wealth from a sound and efficient manner. And so I'm here every week to bring you some of this information. And I do want to hear from you, but it's up to you. If you want to take next steps and take decisive actions, reach out to me. If you have any questions of any of the facts laid out here, contact me. I welcome the opportunity for a one-on-one -on -one conversation, not to sell you, but to be of service. And so until next time, I hope you all have a prosperous day. And until I see you again, enjoy everyone. Take care.